Today I will show you how to make these very high quality site analysis diagrams. I am very excited as they came out amazing. They are easy to make and you only need Photoshop and Google Maps which I'm sure everyone has these days. These will save you time especially if you need your site analysis last minute. First what we have to do is pick our site. So what I'm gonna do is use my site analysis for my last project which I've made plenty of videos for. Once you pick your site, use the snipping tool or just use the screenshot button on your keyboard. Try to make a square but you can fix that later in Photoshop so don't worry if it's not perfect. Unfortunately, you can not hide the labels in this view on Google Maps so, so we just have to erase the text that are cut on the edges. The rest becomes your attractions analysis. So that's already done for you, it has car parks, um, shopping centers and much more so it's quite good now you should really copy them and use it in the key but I really think that they are self-explanatory anyway now we're gonna make the image into isometric view which is 30 degrees now what this does it lets you put it in a specific angle not on a 45 degree angle as a axonometric but more of an isometric which is a bit it's a little bit more in perspective now the magic number is 30 so we're gonna move this angle here to 30 and move the diagonal angle also to 30 after doing that this is what you get and I kind of like it you can try making it you can try making different variations depending on which side you want the asymmetric view to be now the most difficult part is aligning the Google Maps image to the other since the maps image will not be the exact same but it's okay so what I did is I just used the free transform tool and I skewed the crap out of the image make sure that you just mess with it to get it to the best of your ability because you know, at the end of the day, you can only do your best. Now some areas got cut, so I will select them and use the contact aware fill. So it's very useful, it just fills the selected area with the contents, which is quite good. This diagram will also show us vegetation only on the side. So what I will do is erase everything except the vegetation, mainly trees as small green spaces won't actually be anything or do anything as vegetation. This did take the most amount of time for this diagram, but trust me, it will look pretty cool. You can just use the actual map, but I like to show the nature of the site eh, on a different layer to see how they relate to one another and how you can use all of the natural features such as vegetation, water, earth, and see how they all link together. I just used the brush tool and clicked on the clipping mask itself, so you can always fix if anything went bad. I then moved on and pulled up the canal from the below layer and moved it to the right place. I had to, I had to fix it a little bit, erase here and there just to show it properly. On this layer what I will do is show the major roads this is critical for the design process so you know how to deal with all of these constraints and how to manage them. So firstly I select all the roads and make them black after I want and just cleaned up a bit as they are from map so it's not gonna have perfectly clean edges but that's okay. For the major road I will use light red to like a pinkish color. I just selected the layer and used the brush tool to do this. I then used the square brush tool and added a pedestrian path along the major road because that's the area we focus on. Obviously there are pedestrian paths all over but there's no need to show every single one of them as people know that they are there. For the second day road I will use a lighter red which again I selected and brushed all over. For the bike lane I used green which goes along the canal 
and the main road only. Edit all these lines while holding shift as it makes straight lines and it looks uh, more neater and professional too. For the car park roads I made them grey as they are not very important for the analysis as you can just say that they are well, third party roads as they are not being used all the time to cause traffic or anything like that and also because they are private land. This diagram will show major nodes and views. I used the circle tool and held down shift to make a perfect circle and duplicated the circle but then I turned it into a stroke only and then I made a few rings around it. I then copied this in different sizes to show which nodes are more important than the others. So with mainly site analysis it's like the bigger it is the more important or the louder it is. That's why sometimes the noise diagrams are like smaller or bigger depending on the noise. Now I then selected them and turned them into the isometric view which if you remember is 30 degrees now just to make it all lined up nicely. For the noise I will just go zigzag over the road with the most noise as this is done using the square brush tool and holding down shift to get straight lines. Now for the last part of this diagram I will be adding views to the side just to show uh, views in and views out for the site, looking at the most interested areas to make it look nice for my actual site analysis so I can consider that into my actual design process. Now I created this by just using the circle and holding down shift to get it a perfect circle and then I use the arrows while clicking the little button on the top which then turns one of the end of the lines into an arrowhead and I just clicked here and there and then there's your arrow. Now I then thought that the arrows were not very clear so I added a, a thin black outline you know, just to make it stand out a little bit more. For the last diagram I will do wind direction and sun path. And I had this very simple sun path but to be honest I really don't like it but don't worry I didn't skip it I just left it out as I'm gonna do as I'm gonna redo another one. For the arrows I found a wiggly arrow on google and just made it a blue fill. I then made one bigger than the other just to make it look nicer and give it some depth into the actual uh, arrows. I then duplicated the same thing for the summer and winter wind which is both important. Doing the key is very simple, you just add the colors and icons that you've used throughout the whole diagram and so put them all together, add a few text here and there, nothing too complicated. Don't forget to add text on the arrows and, and stuff. Uh, now going to the sun path. I had it in the wrong place anyway, and it didn't really look 3D as everything else was 3D and isometric view. So I created these two curves. They're not perfect because I did them myself by hand using the brush and the plug no lasso tool. I added a few colors and lowered the opacity just to make them a bit more clear, and I think it turned out pretty good. And here's the final diagram. What do you guys think of the diagram? Now this is just something you can put together in a couple of hours, maybe two hours, if you're really quick and you know what you're doing, maybe one. Thank you all for watching, have a good day, see you next time, don't forget to like, share and subscribe.